What's up? Franco here with nextlevelballplayer.com hanging out with Steve Springer, the one and only, the mental guru. Um, Spring, appreciate you taking some time with us. Good to hear. Good to see you, bud. Yeah. Um, we'll hop right into it. Uh, Spring played in the big leagues and logged some major hours in the minor leagues and uh, now has uh, quality at bats.com. And uh, was able to hear him speak yesterday, some great stuff that we're going to hopefully touch on today a little bit. Um, we'll start with what's one baseball related lesson early on that kind of led to your success and longevity in playing the game of baseball? I think the, the highlight of my CD, the thing that when I speak, I try and, well, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get parents and players to get it. So we have to change what we think success is. Right? Success is not getting a hit. Success is being a great competitor five times a day. Tam will hit the ball hard enough to team the period. Right? The most evil thing in baseball, hands down, that I figured out while I was playing about year number eight, is how evil the batting average is. Right? I can't have a goal where I can do everything right in the Right. And then we break that statement down. I can do everything right. I have four rockets right on the screw. I beat the pitcher. Pitcher knows I beat him. Pitcher's mom knows I beat him, and I lose confidence to my bad area. And when I finally said, "I don't care what I hit," it was like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. Right? My first seven years, I was chasing 300, right? And, and it was just like, you know, now I don't even want the fourth or fifth that bad. Right? You know, I'm over four, and I'm looking at the line of bats. You guys, you know, I got to hit again. When I said, "I don't care what I hit," <coughs> it was like I could be over four for four strikeouts, right? and now I'm looking at that line of finding two guys get out so I can get a hit. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to change what we think on what success is. And there's freedom in that. Right? And the Toronto Blue Jays hired me to talk to all our young players about the mind, the mental side. How do we get these kids to have their own life? And it's been really, really successful. And I don't mean to boast, you know, but I played 14 years in the minor league. Right? 1,600 minor league hits, and I had four big league hits. So it's not the career path you guys are looking for. Uh, but for what I was when I started, I'll take it. You refer to the batting average as Satan in your, in your stuff. Um, what's the alternative then? You know, kids have it ingrained in their mind that, you know, like you were saying last night, everyone says, what's your batting average? You know, everyone wants to know their batting average. All right, I went two for four today. What did that do my batting average? What's the alternative? What's that What's that mind switch? Well, I know the batting average is never going to go away. But what it does, it destroys confidence. Right. And the, this whole, my whole spiel is about confidence. We're all getting more confident. You're a good player when you're confident. Yeah. Okay, how, do we, how do we create? Right? How do we create confidence? We have to go with attainable daily goals. Right? Okay. I hit the ball hard, I win. And it doesn't happen overnight. You know, I mean, I got guys that, you know, my, my boss with the Blue Jays, he's like, Spring, you go triple A if you want to. Go to double A once. Get your butt down there with 17, 18, 19 year old kids. So we're teaching these young kids you know, what success is. Right? We have a quality at bat game. With the Blue Jays, we have three $25 Best Buy gift certificates for whoever has the most quality at bats for the week 13. Define quality at bat. Hit the ball hard, get the guy over, punt, uh, you know, walk, eight pitch at bat. You know, anything that is, is attainable, right? Getting a hit is not attainable. Right? I mean, I can do everything right and go off the floor. It goes back to that statement again. Yep. So that can't be my goal. That's got to be a limit. You know, it, it's fun to watch when we give out these awards every week. You know, we might have a guy that went two for 20 winning an award because he lined out eight times or he got a guy over. Right. Right. And they get a gift card. And, and now, okay, now I'm starting to get it. You know, these players are starting to think what success is. Right. And it's you being a great competitor with a tangible ball, hit the ball hard enough to I talked about. Slow that down. <laughs> three things. Four things. Four things. And if, if, if I get you guys to four things every single day, walk and play with confidence. Attain the ball, hit the ball hard. Attack the inside part of the baseball, hit it properly. And the most important thing, help the team win that day. Yeah. Right, here's what we really do. We walk into it less than 100% confidence because our bad name is bringing us down. My goal is to get a hit. It's unattainable. And I'm hooking balls to the hard ground balls to short. It's all about me. Right? You, you do the first four things, and it's going to be good. It's going to be better. Right? We put, we're, we are playing the biggest self-esteem destroying sport in the world. I love that quote. Oh, but especially from an eight to a twelve-year-old, and they're nervous, and they got everybody watching, right? And they boot a ball, and now the dad's yelling, and, 
and, and you know. Right? And now the kid doesn't want to play. Right. right. So we have to retrain parents on what success is. And it's really it's having fun, helping your team with having attainable daily goals. And that there's freedom in that statement. And we, in the Blue Jays, we had five teams out of seven. We collapsed this year. Nobody did that. But we have great coaching, and, and these kids are buying into what success is. What we're trying to do is we're trying to let their abilities come out. If I, if I go to 90% of our players and I say, who do you want to trade abilities with? They're going to say, no, nobody. I like my ability. Yeah. If that's the case, what's it about? It's about this and this. Right? And they work together. Right? The heart, the desire, the compete. And it's about the mind and it's about the mental side. Yeah. That's great. Um, <clears throat> expand a little bit on hitting inside of the baseball, attacking the inside of the baseball. Um, we have a bat there if you need it. But now, I mean, if this is the ball coming at you, pitcher's back here and I'm the hitter, that's where I'm attacking right there because that right there is creating that. That's what we're looking for. That's going to create the line drives, the home runs, the driving ball. I can live with this. Anytime we're over here, we got a hard ground ball. Right? I, 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 my analogy is like a stop sign. Right? Green, yellow, and red. We're always at green. That's go time. I can live with the yellow, but there's a little caution right here. Yeah. Red, eat, stay away. Uh -huh. right. So if, if that's the case, when am I picking up the inside part of the ball? It's out of the pitcher's hand. I'm not looking for the ball. I'm looking for right there. Huh. Right. Mark Trumbo, yeah. who called me about twice a month this year because he's in, he bought all in, want the fifth at bat. Right. His quote on my website is bombs, doubles, and ribbies, want the fifth. Right. And, and he loves talking about attacking the inside part of the ball. Because if, if he swings about as hard as he can swing it, and it does not leave the yard, there has to be a reason. So he can hit him as far as anybody in the middle. Yeah. But sometimes on the wrong side of the ball, he's ripping a, a line out to shortstop, or a hard one off to shortstop. But when he gets to right there, it's a bomb. Yeah. Time. And so um, that, that, that's interesting. When you're picking up the ball out of the pitcher's hand, you're not zeroing in on just the ball. It's that inside part of the It's the inside part of the ball. That doesn't mean I want you hitting an uh, inside pitch to right field for right hand. Now it's about the contact point of where I'm going to get to the inside part of the ball. The middle end, the contact point's out in front of the plate about a foot. Right down the middle, it just comes back about six inches. Ball blowing away, comes back about six inches. And I'm always there, there, and there yeah. on the inside part of the ball. Now, some of your videos, you're working with big league guys and top prospects, uh, doing some sort of drill, you know, different drills with that. Um, is there one drill in particular that the kids at home can do to, to really work on attacking that inside of the baseball? You know what? I think it's more of a thought process okay. and being aware of, okay, why am I attacking? So if I can give you a hitting lesson, and we did flips, and all of a sudden we're hooking balls and you're hitting ground balls, you're going to know it real quick. Sure. All of a sudden you get to the inside part of that ball and you nut it. Now, okay, so you got to touch it to feel it. Right, and that's what... when it, when it, we talk a little bit about just the mental side of hitting, how, you know, how you teach guys to, to approach um, in, a, in the batter's box. It goes back to, you know, daily attainable goals. You know, you have, you have to buy in. If I hit the ball hard, I win. If I get hit, it's a bonus. Right? That, that's the key. And it's easier said than done. Because there's no true statement in my CD. You want to have fun? Get hits. Right? right? right. I get it. I, I get it. I haven't been out of the game that long. Well, maybe I have. But <laughs> it's about it's about giving yourself a chance to get hits. Right? right? And that's where the confidence comes in. 90% of the quality of that in my mind is how you feel when you woke up in the play. Do I know I can hit or am I hoping to hit? Yep. Right? There's a big difference. Eh? And when we go with daily attainable goals, there's freedom in that. Yeah. You know, especially when you're going to play this game another 10 to 15 years. Right? And especially the, the, with the level I teach the pro guys. I love talking to college guys because they want to do it. I spoke to Arizona State, Oregon, Irvine, USC, Notre Dame. All these schools, and it's just a great age to buy into uh, what I talked about. Yeah. It is about the mind, man. I mean, everybody says baseball is, or I say baseball is 90% mental. Then why do we work on less than 10% of the time? Yeah, absolutely. Right? There, we all want it. I mean, I, I'm a big, you know, talk. I talk about breathing on my CD and slowing the game down. Right? Hitting slow feet, fast hands, quiet head. Yeah. Right? I scout every single night. If I'm not coaching, I scout the California Angels system. And I'll see a guy up there like this, and it actually makes me happy. It affects my breathing. Yeah. 
Right, and I'm like, come on, buddy, relax. Right? Yeah. You're going to be your best athlete when your heart beats at 60. Right? Not 120. Yeah. Your mind's at 120. Your mind's focused. Your mind's confident. But hitting's about being on time. Right? I talked about watching the pitcher on my seat. Right? This was huge for me. Right? And if you're lucky enough to play pro baseball, there's no more tests. The pitcher's the test now. Right? And that pitcher's the test. And he's going to give you the cliff notes on what he's throwing. He's going to give you the answers yep. to what's in his arsenal. And so I talked to our players. We don't have five at bats today. We got minimum 15, maybe even 20. Right? But that's like. Why is that? Well, it's because now if I'm a right handed hitter and there's a right handed hitter up, right? And, and, and this pitcher is successful with a 2 1 changeup, nobody on base. You can bet your butt it's coming with runners in scoring position. Yeah, right? But too many hitters try and hit the fastball, curveball, slide up, changeup. Oh, oh. We're looking for everything. We're not ready for anything. Is it easier to hit one pitch when you know it's coming or three and you don't? It's a no brainer. But I'm trying to hit everything. And now I'm late. And all our hitting coaches talk about being on time. Right. Well, I'm going to be on time if you tell me what's coming. Right? Right. And everybody says, oh, it's your guest set. Yeah. Yeah. I'm leading the team in radio. It's good. It's educated guests. Right? Let's get one thing straight. Guessing, sitting on, anticipating, looking for. It's all the same word. Right. Just sounds bad. Yeah. Right. right. Ted Williams is guessing. He hunted pitches. Right. I like that phrase, hunting pitches. And, and it's true, especially at the at the high school level. You watch any pitcher, they fall into habits, routines, and college level, professional level, you know, it's the same, but taking the time to really study the pitcher and, and know that stuff goes a long way when you come to hunting pitches. Too many players look for something they want to hit rather than what they're going to get. Huh. Right. I always want to hit a fastball, but all of a sudden I come up and I'm on second, third, and I'm sitting fastball, I never see it. Right, this is what I did my first seven years. Now I'm trying to adjust, and okay, you know, when mechanics break down when you're not on time, right? So when I start to figure out that, you know what, I don't have to hit it, but I'm going to hunt a pitch, and when I get it, don't miss it. Right? And all of a sudden, my production doubled, right? Because I was a better competitor. I wanted the fifth at bat. Right? That's one of Mark Trumbull's favorite ones. Want the fifth? Yeah. He shot me a text two years ago. He bought in. He shot me a text. I hadn't heard from him in a couple weeks, and he shoots me a text since spring. I had four crappy at bats. Couldn't get you out of my mind. One to get that bat. Two run double walk off and leave it. That's like awesome. that. Boy. He's yeah. getting it. He gets it. Uh -huh. you know, he gets about that. He's playing another 10 years. Minimum. Yeah. So why am I going to worry about stuff I can't control? Yeah. We put way too much tension and too much uh, anxiety on uh, results instead of the process. Yeah. When we go through the process of what success is, and I know that if, if I hit the ball hard, I win, right? Good hitters line out more, right? The better hitter you are, the more lineouts you're going to have. And we had a kid named David Cooper in our system. He got to the big leagues this year, first round picks, always hit, and he bought in, right? And in double A, he led our double A team in hard hit balls. We kept the staff the whole year, and he hit 255. 255, but he had 28 eight. He had 20 home runs and 80 RBIs, right? But he led, our, he led probably the league in lineups. And I told him, I said, oh, good hitters line out more, and he loved that. Because that gave him a little bit of freedom, right? I said, don't change the thing. Last year, in the PCL, everything fell. Had the same approach. At 363, he got a batting title. And he got called big. You know what else he had with the 363? He had 50 doubles and 100 RBIs. Yeah. That's production. Right, and when we get production, and then you, now you get nine players on this program, right? There's no chinks in the armor that, you know, I talk about being a team player. That's what it's about, man. It is about the team. We, we oh, it's all about me. But when you play, the, you play for the name on the front, the team, the guy in the back gets better. Yeah. When you play for the name on the back, the spring or whatever, the team suffers and you suffer. Yeah. It's time for...